Now I'm going to show you how to use a gradient mixer. And so, um, just in general, if you're doing virtue purification, oftentimes a step gradient will give you a cleaner um, evolution profile, but often running a linear gradient will work just as well um, in some cases. And it's a lot easier once you get the setup um, to just set it up and then let it do its thing. Um, I'm going to be collecting the fractions manually and moving it between tubes manually, but you can also set up like a rotary fraction collector down here. And in that case, you can set up the entire system, let it do its thing, and come back um, without having to stand in the holder forever. Um, so let's take a look at the gradient mixer here. So these are used for gradient um, acrylamide gels, but you can also use them to do um, salt gradients for doing protein dilution. So the basic concept is that you have whatever starting buffer you want in the chamber that is closest to the large stopcock, and then you have um, the ending buffer in the farther chamber. In between, there's um, a small connection that is um, sealed at the moment using this small stopcock, and then a stir bar in this chamber here. And so as you start to run this column, we'll open this small stopcock, liquid from here will start mixing into this larger uh, volume and over time as this thing runs it'll have a higher and higher percentage of the ending buffer in this chamber which will then go to the column. Um, so to get this thing started the first thing you need to do is to prime this line so getting all the air out of it and so again we do that by using this three-way valve on our column having it closed to the column but open to the syringe and to the buffer reservoir. So I'm just going to start by opening up um, this one here so that liquid can drain from here into there. Um, and actually I should probably top this off um, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So I'm going to open this up and then prime the line with the syringe. And you can see that the level in this first chamber dropped a little bit, so I'm going to top it off with a little bit more of the starting buffer. Um, if these two are very uneven, as soon as I open this one in the middle, they will equalize and it will basically jump from the starting buffer all the way up to whatever that mixture is. Just top this off. Like okay. Um, so then we can. Uh, close off the three-way valve um, to the syringe, and uh, that'll make it open from the buffer to the column, like this. And then you can see that it's starting to fill um, here up to the depth that is determined by the vertical separation between the column and the buffer reservoir. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up the um, stopcock on the column so that the whole thing will begin to run. And when I do that, I'm going to open the small uh, connection here between the two chambers to actually start the gradient running. And hopefully this thing will be running, uh, spinning fast enough that it'll mix by the time that it runs into here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up this one. So then if you come in and closer and look at this here, you can see that these two things are starting to mix. Um, you can see that there's purple stuff coming in um, from here into the mixing chamber as it's coming through here. Um, so I opened up the stopcock at the bottom so that it'll flow a little bit faster. And if you just watch this, You can see that as time goes on, this one's going a little bit too fast and it's a lot lower, so I'm actually going to slow this back down again um, by closing off the bottom stopcock um, and give these things a chance to equalize. So it's a little tough to control the exact composition 
of this, but it'll be more or less linear if you can match the flow rate out of here with the flow rate out of the bottom of the column um, with the flow rate from mixing between the two chambers. take a look down here, you can see that I've got this going at a pretty good clip. Um, your column will probably not run this fast. Um, I'm using glass beads, like I said, just for demonstration purposes, but a real resin would probably have more resistance than this, and um, it would flow a little bit slower. Um, but overall, you get the idea. So you can see because I didn't balance the flow rates very well, we ended up with air coming into the tubing and it ended up stopping before it reached the end, but I think that's good enough to get the idea. Um, so now let's take a look at this. So you can see that overall from the beginning uh, to the end, um, it's a pretty smooth layer gradient. 